sharing my screen and um, doing some face-to-face -face stuff. So what we're gonna do for the next hour or so is talk about strengthening our community. Whenever there's a group of people together, I like to really consider it a community. So strengthening our community through um, individual connections. And so a little bit about me, this cheesy picture here. Um, so I am a former elementary middle school principal. I was in education uh, starting in the year 2000 um, through 2019, so almost 20 years. Most of the time I spent as an administrator, 15 years as an administrator, most at the middle school level. Um, I was also um, a sixth grade teacher uh, and a varsity baseball coach for a few years as well. Currently, I work as the director of education for an anti-bullying organization. Um, I'm also a consultant, a coach and facilitator for the Foundation for Educational Administration in New Jersey and New Jersey Principal Supervisor Association. I also work with a group called the Origins Program and I travel all over the country virtually teaching teachers how to facilitate virtually. Um, I'm a podcast host. I have a podcast called the Building Men Podcast. It's a group that I facilitated when I was a middle school principal um, and I turned it into a podcast. I'm a really big Harry Potter fan, probably too big for a 44 year old guy. Um, big Marvel Universe fan, and I am definitely a dad joke comedian where my kids are like, dad, that is corny. You need to knock it off. So that's a little bit about me. I'm coming to you from central New Jersey. I live in Bordentown, which is just south of Trenton. And I do um, virtual trainings from my sunroom. And so it's freezing here today. It's really windy. But um, what, I, what I do basically is I travel from Vermont to Florida to Wisconsin to Oregon and I'm, I basically teach teachers the best way to build community with their groups of students um, to manage behaviors, to uh, motivate, to engage in a virtual slash a hybrid setting. So when I connected with um, Joanne, basically we started talking about ways that whenever you're working with a group of individuals, whenever you're working with people, it's really important to try to establish some kind of a community feel with that group. In my opinion, anytime a group of people is together, we really have to be cognizant about creating community. Community is not built just because people are sharing the same schedule or in, you're in the same Zoom meeting. So it's really up to us to make sure that we're cognizant about intentionally building community whenever we have a group of people together. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Um, it's not a long period of time. I would typically do this training over two days. So I'm gonna try to really kind of condense it in. We'll play a couple activities that you can totally take and facilitate with groups of individuals that you're working with. And I've actually created um, a PowerPoint with 52 different activities that you can use that work virtually, they work hybrid, and they work face-to-face. -face. So I would be more than happy to share that with, um, uh, with Denise and Joanne and Mel before I leave today. And you know, maybe those are certain things that you might want to utilize with your own individuals as you're leading people in the future. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. And so what we're going to do today, like I mentioned, is we're talking about strengthening community through our connections. And what I want you to do right now is just take a minute and read what's on the screen right now. I'm going to call this like our quote unquote daily news. Whenever I have a group of people together, I try to have some kind of a routine where the people are reading or interacting with something that's on a screen or on their computer. So we'll call this our daily news and I'll ask you to take a minute and just read what's on the screen right now. And I'll leave it up for about 15 more seconds. All right. So that's a kind of a daily news. What I typically do with groups of educators telling educators to tell their students, whenever you have people coming kind of coming together, having something. Um, consistent where people are they know what to expect when the group meets together so I usually I typically start off with some kind of a, a message on the screen that could be tailored to however your personality is the group of people that you're working with but something that they would see and interact with and kind of helps them get it's like an objective or it's like a 
like a do now as students walk into a classroom or a group of people kind of comes together. And as I'm speaking to you, I'm kind of thinking about things as an educator would speak, but I feel like we're on the same realm where we're talking about how we're meeting the needs of the individuals that we're working with on a regular basis. Um, Denise might have said it when we first started and Mel might have said it as well. For this to really be an engaging, um, interactive PD experience, if you're able to have your camera on, um, it's, it would be recommended because a couple of the activities that we're going to be doing, you'll see it, they work better with our cameras on. So with that being said, the first thing we're gonna do is I always want people to greet one another when they're together, not knowing how many people were going to be in our PD session today. I kind of came up with a greeting that we didn't actually have to um, you know, go one by one and greet one another. So the way that this greeting is, is going to be structured, I'm gonna call this greeting, um, oh, before we get there, real quick, the way we're going to be looking at things today is from a couple different perspectives. So I'll ask you to kind of toggle between putting on a couple different hats the hat of an adult learner, the hat of a student or an individual that might be experiencing this. So I'm a big fan of a constructivist approach where you learn by doing. Um, a leader, so you're leading groups of people. Think about how we might work these things in a face-to-face -face setting and then how we might work these things in a virtual or even a hybrid setting. So we'll kind of think about things from a couple different perspectives as we go through today. And then I just love this quote, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So it takes us a while until we can get these routines and, and structures in place. But once they're in place and we kind of have them flowing with the groups of people that we're working with, they just kind of take hold. And you know, when we can release responsibility to people that we're leading, that's when the true magic really happens. And the other thing that I just want us to keep into, into you know, keep in consideration, again, this would, I would be taking a lot more time if this were, you know, a full day training. Um, but I also tell people to think about whenever we're meeting together, we wanna to be really cognizant of um, helping people understand for this to be successful, what it's going to look like, what it's going to sound like and what it's going to feel like. And what I would typically do with a group of, of teachers that I'm working with, I would say, okay, let's talk to our students about this first. Let's set the stage for success with our students. So before we, we greet each other, what might that look like? And then I would ask people to respond. Well, what is that going to look like if we're greeting each other in a virtual setting? What might that sound like? And then what would it feel like for this to be a successful experience for all of us? And again, this is just something we can go deeper in, um, into this and maybe in some future PD sessions if that's possible. But I just wanted to put that out there. I, I typically try to set the stage for success by people visualizing what success looks like, sounds like, and feels like. So our greeting, the way we're going to greet today is, I'm going to ask us to quote unquote, unmute and greet in the middle. So I'm going to read five different statements. And so if the statement applies to you, if it's something that you know um, resonates with you, I might say, okay, unmute and greet in the middle if you are a baseball fan. And if that applies to you, you unmute your mic, you just lean in a little bit and you just say hello to the other people that lean in, just a way to establish some kind of a, a quick connection. So I'll read five different statements. I'll say unmute and greet in the middle if, and if that applies to you, lean in, unmute your mic, and just say hi to other people that have leaned in there. So I'll stop my share. And so again, if you're able to have your cameras on right now, it's it kind of plays a lot better when you see a couple people kind of leaning in and out away from their cameras. All right, so here we go. We'll start with Unmute and greet in the middle if you have had more than one cup of coffee today. Unmute and greet in the middle. What's up? That is hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello. And I'm still going right now. Hi, everybody. Me too. <laughs> All righty, next one. Unmute and greet in the middle if you love the outdoors. Love it. Hello, Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm currently outdoor. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Um, unmute and greet in the middle if you've traveled outside of the United States in your lifetime. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello. Hello. Hey. Unmute and greet in the middle if you can speak another language, if you can speak more than one language. Hello, everybody. Hi. Well, you consider. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, hopefully everyone's leaning in here. Unmute and greet in the middle if you love to help people. Hi, everybody. What's up? 
All righty. So that was unmute and greet in the middle. So typically when I'm working with a group, I would also say, let's debrief that activity. I think it's really powerful. And we'll talk a little bit more later about the idea of giving, making sure that we're listening to people's voices and we're making sure that people have an opportunity to share their thoughts and their opinions around different things. So whenever I work with a group and we do an activity, we do a share, we do some kind of a greeting. Um, I always say, okay, what went well with that? What could we have done in the future to make that different, to make it more equitable, maybe to make it more challenging, to get more voices into the space? Again, something that I would typically do to debrief. So what we're going to do right now is in that daily news, I ask you to, to just think about something that you've, uh, maybe a hobby and interest that you picked up during the last year. It's been more than a full calendar year now since the world kind of went into this different space. Um, there's been some really, you know, there's been some negative things that have happened, but there's also been some positive things that have happened where people have had to kind of shift and learn a lot more about themselves, um, learn a lot more about different strategies for communication. I wouldn't be able to be, you know, sitting here meeting with a group of you today hadn't, had it not been for having to kind of shift the way that we focus um, interacting with people. So I ask you to, you know, think about things that maybe you have done, a hobby that you've picked up, you know, different activities that you're into now that have changed or that you've picked up over the last year of your life. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into a breakout room and we're going to call this like our quote unquote share. We're going to be just be sharing something about ourselves really quickly in this breakout room. So you'll join three other people in a breakout room and you'll just share, hey, I picked up, I don't know, I'm, I like to juggle now or I, you know, I like to walk outside, whatever it is. Um, and we'll just start with, um, we'll just go uh, the, the first letter of whatever the first name that you have there. So if your first letter of the thing is like, I'm looking at Joanne's, it's R. So that would be, we'll go in alphabetical order. So we'll just start with the first letter of the first thing in your um, Zoom screen. We'll just share in that order. Before we head out into breakout rooms, does anyone have any clarifying questions? We are only showing the sharing the hobby, not the indicators of a strong and healthy community. Right, because that'll be something that I just wanted people to have on the back of their gotcha. minds. That we go okay. okay. Yeah, just a quick hobby. We'll spend a total of four minutes in the breakout room so everyone has an opportunity. If you've all gone in the breakout room, feel free to ask a clarifying question or a follow-up question to the people that you're with. Alrighty, so I will see you back here in four minutes.
Hey, Michelle, everybody was in a breakout room. The rooms are closing now, though. pandemic here. Alrighty, everybody's back in from the breakout room. So we started with a quick daily news just to kind of introduce ourselves into this new group setting, a quick greeting, something to share about ourselves. And that could be anything in the world, but what we're trying to do is establish um, an opportunity for people to connect and then again to create community. We'll talk a little bit later about the idea for incorporating fun into things we're doing. So in that end right now, we're just going to play a quick game. It's called Heads or Tails. Um, so basically in front of me, I mean, I just, I have a quarter here. It's a, there's a heads and there's a tails for this quarter. And the way we're going to do it, the, the first thing we're going to play, it's going to be an elimination game. So the way we're going to play Heads or Tails is everyone starts with their cameras on. I'm going to tell you if I'm going to start the quarter facing up with its heads up or with the tails up on my thumb and I'm going to flip the coin. So basically what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to guess what you think it's going to land on. So before I flip the coin, I'll say everybody make your selection. If you think it's going to be heads, you put your hand on your head. If you think it's going to be tails, put your hand on your shoulder. So it's heads and tails. I'll flip the coin. I'll let you know what it lands on. If you're correct, you keep your camera on. If you're incorrect, you turn your camera off and we'll play until there's one person remaining in the game, heads or tails. So there's one, there's two different ways to play. We'll play it one way first and then I'll give you a way to play it the second way. So before we begin, does anyone have any clarifying questions on how to play heads or tails? All right, so I'm gonna start it on a heads right now. I'm gonna ask everybody to make a selection, heads or tails. All right, here we go. First flip is tails. If your hand's on your head, turn off your camera. If your hand was on your shoulders, you keep your camera on. All right, those remaining in the game, I'm gonna start on tails this time. I've done this game 150 times and people are like, you have to tell people what it starts on heads or tails, so I'm doing that. Starting on tails, make your guess, heads or tails. All right, here we go, second flip. Tails again. I think everybody guessed tails that time too. I don't think I've ever had that where every single person guessed the same thing. All right, I'm gonna start on tails again this time. I'm gonna start on tails again this time, make your selection, heads or tails. All right, here we go. Tails again, tails again. If your hand was on your head, turn off your camera. If your hand was on your shoulders, keep your camera on. All right, I'm gonna start on heads this time. Ask everybody to make their selection, heads or tails. All right, here we go. And it is heads. It is heads. Is that Alyssa? Is that how you pronounce it? Alyssa's the champ. Alyssa. Alyssa's Alisa. the champ. All right, well, here you go. Well, I'm gonna pretend that this is like a, like a UFC championship belt. It's a virtual one, so it's invisible right now. Right, you're on the screen right next to me, so I'm just gonna hand this over to you. So you wanna grab it from me right now? And if you could just please proudly display this championship belt for heads or tails. So everybody turn on your cameras right now. Everybody can turn their cameras back on because we're gonna play this a second way. That way is an elimination game, right? So um, let's give Alisa a round of applause, right? For correctly guessing four times straight. So the second way that we can play this game is this way. Um, obviously, you know, having a, a physical quarter can be challenging. I mean, there were, I did that game many, many times. There was one time that I did it. I remember I was, I was telling someone before the game, I'm like, you know what? I've never dropped the quarter. I, you know, I'm pretty much a, a pro at this. And I did it the first, like with that group and the quarter hit the table and I dropped it. And I looked like a fool trying to get the quarter off the ground or whatever. So there's a second way you could do it where 
Um, I'm gonna share my screen with you. You could do like a virtual coin flip. And the way that we're gonna play it this time is if you're, we're still gonna vote if you want it to be heads or tails, so we'll still vote the same exact way. So if you're incorrect, you turn your camera off. But if your camera's off, you get to vote in the chat window what you think it's gonna be heads or tails the next time. And if you're correct in the chat window, you get to turn your camera back on. So this way you can kind of toggle in between. It's not like a, an elimination game. You can kind of go back and forth and have people guess. So we'll play it this way. So um, I'll do a virtual coin flip. So it's on the screen right now. So if you think it's gonna be heads, put your hand in your head. If you think it's gonna be tails, put your hand on your shoulders. All right, I'll flip. All right, so it's tails. If your hand's on your head, turn off your camera. If your hand was on your shoulders, you remain in. So now what we'll do is, if your camera's off, put it into the chat window what you think it's gonna be, heads or tails. So if your camera's off, you can put it into the chat window now what you think it's gonna be, heads or tails. All right, I'll do another flip. And it was heads this time. All right, so I'm gonna stop my share right there. So that's heads or tails. Um, it's just a really quick game that you can do. It's an activity. It requires kind of movement and cooperation. And you know, you definitely see people smiling um, and interacting on the screen. It can be something that's done really quickly, but what it does is it really kind of helps establish that community feel and that connection feel. So one way is more of a like quote unquote competitive thing that you can do. The other way is more kind of collaborative in nature where it's kind of going back and forth between camera on, camera off. But again, it, it helps people kind of lean into their screen a little bit more. So I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen just to kind of walk through what we just did. Activity was heads or tails. So what we want to do is when we're thinking about, you know, building community with a group of people, what we always want to do, what, in my opinion, what we want to do is have some kind of a message that welcomes people in, like that initial message that I shared with you, our daily news in the beginning. We want to greet one another whenever there's a group of, of individuals together, make sure that we learn names, we practice courtesy. We just acknowledge people's presence. Think about in the world in the last year, how many people will go the course of their day and they're not acknowledged by another human being. So whenever there are a group of people together, we always want to make sure that we're cognizant of acknowledging people's presences. The other thing we want to do is do some kind of a share. Maybe we'll, we'll form bonds, we'll share connections. When you went into a quick breakout room, what I asked you to do is just something that you picked up over the last year of your life. So maybe there was an opportunity in that quick breakout room session where you said, hey, you know, both of us enjoy crocheting or whatever the case may be. Hey, we just established a quick connection there with another human being. And when you can find those connections, it just helps you um, experience life in, in a greater way when you're able to establish those connections. And then finally, some kind of an activity, just have fun to engage, to uh, practice inclusivity, things along those lines. And so whenever, whenever I do any type of, of games or activities with groups of people, I always think about it in this way. I wanna start on the left-hand side and I want it to be you know, more simple, less risk, requiring a little less self-control from people or individuals, less autonomy or less of people's voices in the space where it's more of the, you know, the facilitator's voice out there and then less prior knowledge. And as community is built and we're spending more time together, we can kind of go along this continuum to where there are more complex activities, a little more riskier, maybe more autonomy is on the part of the learner there. I'm gonna stop share for a sec. So I'm gonna play another activity with you right now. This one is Would You Rather? So Would You Rather is a game, I mean, I remember playing Would You Rather in college. Um, it'll be a little, a little bit different. I mean, there's not going to be, hopefully not beverages near us as we're going through this game right now, but that's how I learned to play this game. We're gonna play it a little bit differently, but um, so the, the game Would You Rather, basically there's gonna be a couple different um, ways that we're going to do this game. And so what we're gonna do is I'm going to start off saying, um, I'm going to read two statements out to you. If you would rather the first one, I'm just going to ask you to hold up a number one. If you'd rather the second, I'm going to ask you to hold up a number two. And I'll change that as we go along the game as well. So if you'd rather the first one, hold up a number one. If you'd rather the second one, I'm going to ask you to hold up 
a number two. Before we start, would you rather, does anyone have any clarifying questions? If you do, you can just unmute your mic and, and share your voice out in the space. Those without a camera, how we put it in the chat? I think that's a great idea. So if you don't have a camera, let's put that in the chat. You could just write, you could just put a, a number one or a number two in the chat. All right, so here we go. Would you rather, one, have to dance every time you hear music, or two, have to sing along to any song you hear? Oh. And just take a quick look around at your colleagues, see what everybody put out there. Again, we're trying to establish some connections here with one another. All right, so next one. Would you rather, one, travel the world for a year but it's on a shoestring budget or two you have to stay in one spot for a year but you get to live in the lap of luxury okay all right so now i'm going to change up how we're going to vote for the would you rather so if you're putting into the chat window um i'm going to say you can put either lean in or lean back. So we could either put in or back. So those of us with our cameras on, if we'd rather the first one, we're gonna do an extreme close up. We're gonna get really close to the camera. If we want the second one, we're gonna lean back away from the camera. So if you want the first one, you lean in. If you want the second one, you're gonna lean back. All right, we're gonna go through two rounds of this one. All right, so if you're, if you're chatting, it's in or back. So would you rather always have the hiccups or always feel like you have to sneeze. Sadistic questions I'm asking here, right? <laughs> All right. Would you rather drive a car that can fly or drive a car that could go underwater? All right, so this last round, let's see, I'm gonna do, all right, I'm gonna do, we'll do like like a goofy one, right? So if you'd rather the first one, let's do like, like bunny ears, we'll do this. All right, so we'll put our hands up like this on our head. So if, you, if you're chatting, we'll do ears and we'll do like antlers for the second one. So we'll do like bunny ears or like moose antlers. That'll be how we're gonna vote. All right, so would you rather have to walk backwards or have to skip all the time. You either have to walk backwards or skip. I think I'd rather walk backwards. All right, last one. Would you rather be invisible for the day or be able to fly for the day? All right. All right, so that was would you rather. For me, that's one where I'd love to take like a screenshot and have people like this. They're like, what the hell is going on in this training right now? Right now? All right, so that was would you rather. There's a million different ways that you can play this. Typically, if I'm doing like a longer training, um, what I would try to do is really debrief every one of these activities. You know, really talk about it. Like, okay, how can we um, picture us utilizing that with the group of people that we're working with on a regular basis? Let's, let's brainstorm different ideas. Let's really kind of unpack that. Um, but because it's a shorter period of time, I just wanted you to really experience a lot of these things for yourself as well. So that was would you rather. And again, you can take people's suggestions. Like it could be, I might say, hey, Robin, you know, for the next time that we're together, can you give us a couple different examples of would you rathers? Um, and maybe Robin leads it, you know, the next time that we do it. And then, then after that, um, maybe Katie leads the would you rathers. And again, it gives people's uh, people have an opportunity to have their voice out in the space and then they have this level of competence when they're successful at working at things together. Um, so that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put us into a couple breakout rooms. Give me a sec as I'm creating these rooms right now. I'm going to create five breakout rooms and your breakout room is going to be labeled with one of the needs that I feel like we need to really take into consideration um, when we're working with people. So the, the five needs that I'm going to have us discuss are going to be autonomy, which is, you know, making sure that people's voices are, are a part. We're really taking people's opinions into consideration. Um, the next one is competence, making sure that 
people feel good at what they're doing. You want to make people, people have an opportunity to feel competent and competent at what they're doing. The next one is relationships. So make sure that we're meeting people's needs to, um, for that relational need with each other. The next is fun. And the final is safety. So there's going to be four different or five different rooms that we're going to go into. So I was just able to recreate those rooms and I'm just gonna share my screen so we have an idea exactly what we're, what we're going to be asked to do. Hold on one second. So let me go to, so these are just basic human needs. We all have these five different human needs. We all have to feel as though we're, we have relationships with people. We need to feel like our voices are heard. We need to feel that we're competent at things. We need to have fun. I mean, obviously we need to have fun. And when we're able to do that with a group of people that we're working with, even better. And even more importantly, over the last year of our lives, we need to feel safe. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a breakout room. There's going to be um, about six people in each room. And so what we'll do is we'll just take a second just to identify the name of our room. So you'll be in a room that's titled autonomy, competence, relationship, fun, or safety. So what I want you to do when you enter the room is first read the name of the room. It'll be the name of your breakout room and think about, okay, what can I do to meet the people's needs that I'm working with or that I'm leading um, in this specific area? Then what you'll do is have a discussion with your colleagues in that breakout room and say, okay, what can we do as, as leaders in this area to make sure that we're meeting, meeting our um, constituents, these individuals' needs, our clients' needs in this specific area. And then when we get back from the breakout room, we'll spend a total of seven minutes. I'm just going to ask the person who has the longest last name to just share one minute, um, kind of framing the discussion that your group had. So if your group, if your group talked about um, fun, it might be, okay, you know, giving people an opportunity to laugh and to smile during our times when we're meeting together. So you'll basically frame your discussion around the name of your breakout room and the person who has the longest last name, I'll ask you to just have a quick um, discussion, a one minute discussion when we return from that breakout room. Before we head out into the breakout room, does anyone have any clarifying questions about your responsibilities? All right, so we'll see you back here in seven minutes. Person with the longest last name, and we'll just go in alphabetical order. So we'll start with autonomy, competence, fun, relationship, and safety, and we'll present out in that specific order. So I will see you back here in seven minutes.
Alrighty, looks like everybody's back from the breakout room. So we'll go in alphabetical order, um, autonomy, competence, fun, relationship, and safety. So uh, for the group that discussed autonomy, whoever had the longest last name, just jump in and say, hey, this is what our discussion was about um, for that seven minutes. This is what we came up with. So hello. I was part of the autonomy group. And um, so what we talked about was um, how do we help the individuals that we support in establishing and learning about their autonomy. And so we talked about um, allowing them the space to share their skill and what they're good at um, and giving them ideas also, because sometimes we may present it, um, but they may not know what they're good at. So giving them options, also giving them the space to choose uh, things that they would want to do and how they want to live their lives. Um, we also flipped it and uh, said for staff, frontline staff, um, what are they good at and how they can uh, present that with, to the individuals that we support. Um, so um, I forgot your name, but you talked about a staff who uh, was a little shy on doing cooking classes on Zoom and now she is, she or he is like a chef uh, via Zoom and um, doing uh, that for the individuals we support. Um, and just giving uh, the staff also the support during COVID, a lot of staff went through a lot as well and giving them that space. Thank you, Lakeisha, I appreciate it. And just the, that word choice is such a powerful word. When, when people feel as though they have some kind of say in whatever is in front of them, that can make all the difference in the world. It, it might be two things that they're not totally you know, enamored with, but at least they feel as though their voice is a part of that option there. What a, what a powerful word. Um, next was the group that talked about competence. I, it was, we talked about competence. We came up with just quite a few different things to try. Um, one is having demonstrations and videos on, on different things that people might be interested in learning about. Um, doing like a show and tell. Um, what are you good at? Taking turns. Um, asking people what they want more information about and, and, and trying to get that information to them. Um, have people share what they what, what makes them good, bet, good at their jobs. Um, charades is another one. Each person acts out something that they like to do and have everybody guess. Um, what are you most proud of? Another question to kind of ask people about to let them start talking about themselves. Thanks, Robin. And um, just throughout that process, you mentioned, you know, just giving people an opportunity to, um, you know, it was like a, like a show and tell kind of thing. Um, but then also the, the thing that I thought about was just how powerful the feedback portion um, when you're trying to help people feel competent in whatever that capacity might be. There's, it's such a powerful thing. I do a workshop just around language that we use, the way, the way that we communicate, not only the verbal language, but the, the paraverbal communication, the way our, the tone, the volume and the cadence of the words that we're saying, that's, that's communicating more than the words themselves. And even more importantly is the nonverbal communication. And so when we're able to give feedback to people and really be cognizant of how we're communicating that feedback so people feel more competent in their abilities, that's such a powerful thing. The next group was the group that talked about fun. You're muted, Laurel. Oh, Laurel, is that you? <laughs> oh, thanks. I, and I had the thing hovering, the mouse hovering, just to make sure I unmuted myself. Um, we felt that it can't always be business, whether it's um, with the people we support or with staff, um, that as often as possible, we should make the situation as fun as possible. Um, that's not always appropriate, but um, for most instances, um, and, it, and because um, if it's authentic, it makes it much, a much more meaningful experience. So when somebody has fun, they very often remember that experience more. Um, and we also talked about the fact that um, things need to be kept more lighthearted sometimes because sometimes um, we see we have more clarity. Um, when we go into a tense situation, a lot of times we, we miss things and we miss opportunities because everyone's so tense about 
things. So if we keep it a, on a little bit of the lighter side, and then someone um, was talking about the fact that they start their meetings with a, a silly question. So it starts that whole dialogue with something a little bit lighter. So people that are shy tend to, um, it brings them out a little bit more. If things start out so serious and tense right off the bat, people who are a little bit nervous about sharing their experiences or putting their ideas out there, um, maybe they will because it starts out a little bit more lighthearted and a little bit more open. So people feel more open to sharing. Thank you, Laura. What great points. And when you, when you get people um, that question of the day or that, you know, silly question, wrap it back to um, the initial um, Lakeisha's thing about autonomy. Maybe they come up with some of the silly questions. You know, maybe there's a silly question, but we let, you know, the group, you know, submit suggestions so they feel that their voice is a part of that space as well, where we're trying to meet. When we go through this, we'll talk about like all these five, these five big needs that we have. When we can be cognizant, when we're planning what we're doing, if we can, maybe not every time, maybe there's not always a time to have, you know, an activity or something, but at least if we're cognizant of these five things, we're really taking into consideration that holistic approach and meeting all these needs that people have. Uh, the next need was uh, the need for relationship. Hi. Um, <laughs> so we spoke about different ways to um, establish the relationships with people with disabilities and also within staff as well. So uh, we spoke about the simplicities of uh, just, just developing a relationship based with them. Like they the same way that maybe we will seek a relationship is not the same way they would. So, you know, saying a simple hello or how to give a handshake or so, well, not now. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was pretty. Um, yeah, so one of the, um, I forgot the, the woman's name, I'm sorry, one of the young ladies here was talking about um, now doing it virtually like she used to go out to the community or so and and with the with the people and it's just like now it's not really possible but yeah it's just the, like simple ways to basically develop a relationship sorry i'm losing my train of thought <laughs> no and i appreciate that and it, as long as we're cognizant of it where maybe it's you know if it's a virtual thing maybe chat to a partner you know, or, you know, we could have a breakout room space or, you know, just is establishing the idea that people need to connect with one another. And that's why we would, you know, we, we heard a say in the beginning, even though we're not in person, I mean, obviously I would love to, you know, facilitate this in a, you know, in a face-to-face -face setting, you have that, you know, a nice connection that way. But even if it's not being able to see people's faces and see that body language as people are smiling or nodding into the camera, just, you know, that helps establish that relation, relational peace and, and connections with individuals as well. Um, the final one in our alphabetical order was safety. So who has safety? Hello. Um, so we, we talked about the importance of having a welcoming environment. Um, and we mentioned that in the beginning, just asking the participants like how they are doing, just simply checking in to see, you know, if they're, you know, how people are doing, if they're having a good day, if they're having a good, you know, afternoon or whatever it may be. Um, we also talked about just safety within the environment. Um, now we, you know, we are doing like hybrid um, training. So making sure that they know that when you do come in, um, there is gonna be cleaning, we are gonna practice social distancing um, and all of these things. Uh, and also making sure that the participants feel comfortable um, and they feel like they, their confidentiality will be respected. Um, and we also mentioned having the group also develop guidelines in regards to what they believe safety in uh, in that group setting would look like. Um, yeah, that's pretty much some of the things that we, we came up with. Perfect. And I love what you just said at the end there, like having the group develop norms around safety. Again, like circling back to that piece where their voices are a part of the space, making sure that they understand that, you know, it's okay if they're having a bad day or, um, and recognizing, listen, we, we, we're gonna talk about trauma in, in June, but we're all going through a traumatic experience right now. And to recognize that we're all going through this, this event right now, um, and we need to take care of one another. We need to take care of ourselves and we need to take care of one another as well. 
Um, so again, this is trying to condense like a lot into you know a, a short period of time. I really felt like it was important to get at least three games in here today. So um, the last game that we're going to play, um, it's called Bop It. So if anybody remembers the actual handheld game, I'm going to show you a quick video about Bop It. I see some people kind of nodding their heads. Like, what's this guy going to be up to right now? Um, so this is a commercial from 1998 um, about Bop It. Let me play it now. Hey, want to play Bop It? It commands you obey. Bop It. Twist It. Happen. If you can't keep up, it. you lose. Once you get your hands on Bop It, you're not going to want to stop it. Fast talking electronic Bop It. Batteries not included. Hey! Right, let me stop that. Let me stop my share. So, um, I I played this game with teachers over the last um, almost year. I just what I try to do is is find ways to incorporate some movement, some activity, and smiles. Like I like for me, the best feedback is people nodding their heads and smiles, especially when you're doing things virtually. So that was actually I I remember I got that that game. You know. Um, in the 90s, that Bobbit game it was a handheld game. You have to pass it. We're not going to be passing anything with anybody else. We're going to, like, our Bobbit is going to be our body. So there's going to be four movements for Bobbit. So the four movements that we are going to do for Bobbit. So I'll show you the movement and I'll ask everybody if you're comfortable having your, um, your camera on and yourself unmuted for this, it's even more fun. Um, so I'm just going to ask everybody just to kind of step a little bit outside of their comfort zone for this last game that we're going to play. This game is called Bop It. What I'll do is I will show you what the move is and the sound that you make for Bop It. So I'll do, there'll be four different movements. So we'll practice them and then we'll go through a couple rounds of Bop It. So the first one that we're going to do, if you could have your, your mics unmuted to it, it's even more fun. So the first one is just this, it's Bop It. That's it. So it's Bop It. So I'm going to ask everybody to do that one more time. Bop It. All right, the second one we're going to do is snap it. It's just snap it. All right, so this is where it gets fun. The next one is twist it. And the way twist it is, is this. Twist it. All right, and the last one is pull it. And pull it sounds like this. All right, so what we'll do is I'll go in that order. I'll go bop it, snap it, twist it pull it and we'll go through that twice and then I'll change the rules a little bit. All right, so bop it, snap it, twist it, pull it and we'll follow along. So here we go, ready? Bop it, snap it, twist it, pull it, bop it, snap it, twist it, pull it. All right, well done. What we're gonna do is Speed it up a little bit now. So we're gonna stay in the same order, but I'm gonna go a little bit quicker. All right, same order, a little bit quicker. Here we go, bop it, snap it, twist it, pull it, whoop, bop it, snap it, twist it, pull it, whoop. All right, well done again. So now, as you can probably imagine, the order is gonna change this next time that we do it. So you really have to pay attention because we're gonna go in a different order. The we same four that movements. None of us have been drinking. <laughs> Most of the things that I do are just I like repurpose drinking games from 1997. Pretty much what I'm doing here. Relatable. I'm gonna Relatable. look like I'm drinking. I'm telling, but I'm not. I swear it. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Last round. Last round. Here we go. Pop it. Pull it. Whoop, whoop. Pull it. Whoop. Snap it. Pop it. Pull it. Whoop. Pull it. Whoop. Twist it. Snap it. Pop it. Pop it. Pop it. All right, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> All right, so that last game was Bob. But again, the cool thing there, when you think about autonomy, you could have kids or people or whoever make up moves. But you could have, like, do this really quick in the chat window. Put in the chat window, if you can make up a move for that, what would, what would it be called? So you can make up anything in the world. You can call it zip it or skip it or whatever. Put something into the chat window. What would you make up? What move would you mm. add to Bob it? Clap it, sing it, flick it, poke it, Good. bring it. Oh, I love it. 
and this is, is this could get out of control pretty quickly so i'll stop <laughs> i'll stop it there reverse it i love it all right so i just wanted to kind of bring it back to our initial thing together so here's what what's so important so what i just wanted you to recognize like think about when we started one hour ago right we just meet each other for the first time and what i really wanted to impress upon you was the idea of like creating community through these connections and so it's it's absolutely possible in one hour i never met anyone in this room i at face to face i i met denise and joanne really quickly but i didn't know you an hour ago and so fast forward one hour from the shared experiences that we have together you can feel a community being established in one hour based on what we did. So we, we, we greeted each other. We had some kind of a message or a daily news. We shared something about ourselves. We played a couple different activities and then we went through kind of an intellectual journey around needs that we have developmentally. Like we have that need for autonomy, for competence, for fun, for relationship and for safety. But when you can frame those things in a safe environment where you're able to you know, be yourself, to laugh, to smile a little bit, Anything is possible. And you know, we mentioned it before, when you feel safe and a part of a community, what you're able to do, what you're able to share, the things you're able to accomplish collectively, it's, it's exponential rather than being in a, in a space where everyone's cameras are off and it's one person, one person lecturing to a, to a group of people. So I would say whenever you have the opportunities to establish those connections with the people that you're working with, you always wanna take those opportunities. And I'll just go back to sharing my screen really quickly, just with my contact information. Um, so that's me. My name is Dennis. Oh, that's off the screen right now. My name is Dennis Miralda. That's my email address um, and my cell phone number. If you ever um, wanted to reach out, just about the activities that we um, we played here today, um, or you know, I'd be happy to come and you know work with your groups and facilitate you know next level stuff or even the same kind of stuff that we did today. Um, so I wanted to thank, um, thank Joanne, thank Mel, and thank Denise uh, for the opportunity. They also have my contact information and I'll share anything that we did today. I'd be happy to share with you as well. It was really great to meet everyone. Um, good luck in the upcoming months. Thank you so much, Dennis. This was great. It was a good way to spend some time on the Friday. Thank you. Absolutely. It was awesome. Thank you, Dennis. Oh, so I'm gonna, um, Denise, I'll make you the, um, the host again and I'll, I'll jump off. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Take Have care, a great everyone. day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.